Hello and welcome everybody to another ContraBIM tutorial on ArchiCAD. My name is John and today's video we are going to be taking a look at this sample project that's been imported into a little ArchiCAD template that I built that's really specifically set up for importing SketchUp objects and being able to cut floor plans and sections and elevations and output those quickly to PDF, DWG or even BIMX. Uh, format. So, uh, so that's what we're going to be talking about today is kind of going through the steps of how uh, this is set up. And if you want to actually get this sample project file and uh, download it and play around with it for yourself, uh, you can do so by joining the brand new ContraBIM community. Uh, this sample project is actually what we are going to be using as our subject for next week's uh, training boot camp for new members where we're actually going to go through, build up the site build the architecture or model the architecture in, in ArchiCAD. We'll do the structural components and we'll also do the MEPs. So uh, we're going to be doing a wide range of modeling techniques and documentation methods and uh, producing a set of plans of this project. So, um, so yeah, if you, yeah, in case you missed it, we just announced our new membership site is now live. So we have members uh, signing up from all around the world and uh, the month of August, we're going to be kind of doing this introduction boot camp where uh, we'll walk everyone through the latest ContraBIM templates and, uh, yeah, we'll get everybody up to speed on the training real quickly. And, um, yeah, this is just a little kind of sample preview of what we'll be doing for the rest of the month in the boot camp. So hope you'll go check those out and, uh, and join us. So for today's, you know, to dive into what we're going to be talking about today, um, Let's take a look at our floor plan here. And I actually have a few notes kind of scratched out here for really kind of like the sequence of how this template is supposed to be used. So uh, we'll kind of go through and uh, check out the different steps. Uh, but I want to just give you a quick little preview of what the output of this actually looks like. So ultimately, it's going to be a PDF that has several different drawing views from site plans to 3D views, exploded views of the project. Um, of course, we're going to be outputting floor plans. Uh, we actually are doing a, a real reflected ceiling plan. So this is actually a 3D view of the model looking up from the bottom and then kind of flipping things around. So I'll show you how to do that here later. Um, foundation views and then obviously elevations, sections, and a few kind of uh, specific sections for stairs and whatnot. So uh, that's really the output. That's the goal of this process is to quickly be able to input a SketchUp object, you know, for you know one object for the entire project site, and then be able to output all those different drawings as quickly as possible. And the you know the reason for doing this is to um, you know have those documentation uh, sets that we can you know annotate, dimension, and ultimately coordinate against. Um, either an ArchiCAD project we're building or anything else. So uh, one of the reasons that it's nice to do this actually in its own uh, ArchiCAD file, this, uh, this rig, is because SketchUp objects can load down your project files a little bit, especially when they're a little bit larger and more complex. This is only about a 60 megabyte SketchUp file that was imported, but um, the template file itself empty is about 30 megabytes and at the end of it it's almost 200 megabytes so if you want to save that space and that size of your project you can bypass importing SketchUp into your actual working ArchiCAD projects by going this route and uh, lightening things up and then just bringing in the DWGs or the PDFs uh, that you want to use uh, in your actual working ArchiCAD file. Okay, so let's jump back into the steps here. I'm kind of uh, jumping all over the place. I'll try to keep things focused from here on. So uh, so yeah, let's go through the steps. So step one is obviously we need to import the ArchiCAD project and um, really you can just drag and drop SketchUp files right into your working floor plan here. I like having my SketchUp objects on a single layer that's just set up for uh, the SketchUp objects, that way if I do end up bringing it into a real working project, uh, we can quickly hide those or, uh, you know, not always be viewing them. Um, the next step would be to rotate around the XY plane. So this is actually best done in a 3D view here. I'll show you why. We can't really rotate a SketchUp object in a 2D view because we can't snap 
to any of the content that we're seeing here in the plan view. So all we really get is just a view of this SketchUp object from the top here, and that doesn't really allow us to snap to anything here. Um, so it, it's, it's a little bit difficult to actually rotate this and get the walls to be exactly 100% in, uh, in relation to our uh, grid pattern. So uh, the best way to do that is to actually do this in 3D. Uh, you find a good wall that you know is straight and that you want to have a line to your grid lines. And then you go in and you do like your, for me it's control E to get into my rotation command. Why is that not working? Oh, well, of course, we have to select the object first. Control E to rotate. We get our little kind of compass wheel thing there. You want to click on the surface. And then as you move the mouse out, you can tell that we're already on our, our Y plane here. But you'll get this little kind of change in the mouse where it looks like a little plane. And that's when you know that you're on the plane or the face of the SketchUp object there. And so I always just wait till I'm on there and then from there you can rotate. And obviously we're already set up here, but um, if we were rotated off a little bit, it would make it really easy to just bring it back in and snap it to the X or the Y, uh, sorry, the X or the Y, depending on what direction and what face you want to rotate to. So that's really step one. Um, step one of importing and aligning. Step two is we need to locate uh, somewhere like the bottom left corner of the project site. Um, I always like working with my projects where they start at the zero point is the bottom left. So you can see here our grid intersections are located right at this corner here. You can actually see that it's offset a little bit inward uh, because I always like having my grid lines set up right where we're on the face of the framing member. Um, just makes it easy for aligning a lot of things from you know floor structures to walls to roof structures and and so on everything can just kind of snap to those grids and uh, makes the modeling process a little um, a little easier so this would be the first step just to kind of get it close the second step is actually going into the sections here so let's pull up a section and we'll look at a section one cutting through here and this is where oh, you can actually see in this template we have a lot of like little notes and things that you can kind of just drag into place if you want like over here we could grab some of these items oh sorry that's actually on a trace reference um, some of those um, but we can bring over different measurements here and you know of course we don't have a windowsill right there maybe we have one on the other side no we do we can always just go over here and snap things and get things pretty close. So these are just little dimensioning tools that are part of the rig itself. Um, but in, in terms of alignment, we want to just, usually when you bring in the SketchUp object, a lot of the times it'll be coming in like way up high here, I've noticed. Um, so what we want to do is just drag it down. And in section, we can actually snap to these uh, the faces or the lines the cut lines through the, the object, so it's a little bit easier to modify things in section. But we just drag those down and snap them too. Um, I usually have my finish, or my zero elevation right at the top of the floor uh, uh, floor decking. Um, so you have you know your decking and then your structural framing below that, and then you have your finishes above that, is how I typically like setting it up. Um, but for the case of aligning this, usually we just drop it down and set that right to the zero. So that would be kind of like the first few steps there. Um, from within the section, we can also um, align our exterior walls. So we go back to our section one here. You can see our exterior wall. I think we decided in the process here that we wanted this to be exactly one and a half inches just as kind of a placeholder. Um, but so we've aligned it from our direction, one direction and the other direction in order to get those walls exactly where we wanted and um and yeah we've actually already produced a detailed training video on how this was all done uh, that's part of the the membership site and kind of the preview of what we're going to be doing with the boot camp um, so if you want to learn more about this go ahead and uh, sign up for the community and you can download these sample files and play around with this yourself but let's get back here and uh, continue on. So uh, this next step, creating a floor plan view. So this actually takes just a few uh, steps here to get our floor plans actually working. So the first one is actually we need to create a view 
in the 3D window in AXO view where we have cut planes from the top and bottom of the section we want to clip for our floor plans. So we'll go over here to our 3D documents and we have a SketchUp level one and what we want to do here is I just want to open the source view of this to show you what this viewpoint looks like. So you can see here that we actually have shadows turned on on this particular view and if and of course we're looking at this directly from the top down and I'm just going to rotate this a little bit so you can see uh, what's going on here. So this you know of course was set up to be our first floor uh, floor plan and um, hey knock it off over there my dog's starting to go a little crazy I don't know what's going on. Cool it. Okay. Um, sorry. Uh, anyway, so what we've done here is we've had some cuts set up. And so you, if you turn off the 3D cutaways and you turn it back on, you can see where those cut planes actually are. And so typically with this, I'll set the bottom cut plane just right to the level one elevation here. You can see like as I hover over here, it's right at the level one. That way, when we do that, we can pick up all the floor uh, surfaces or finishes there um, and then from the top uh, we can take the top section and usually I like setting it somewhere in the range of um, actually that's a note I want to point out wherever you click to make the move that's where your little measurement tool will be for your story so instead of clicking way over there like I did the first time it's better to click in close to your model so that you can actually see where you're snapping it in terms of your levels. It's just a little bit easier there. So you can see my cut plane is currently probably right around like six feet there, which is pretty good. It's picking up our upper cabinets. Um, if we wanted to, we could adjust this and say go to, let's go to like seven feet here and let's finalize this view. Oop, that's not what I wanted. So it did not stick where I wanted it there. So let's go to seven feet as our cutting plane and let's finalize that and we'll go back to our top view here um, now one thing that may be a result of moving that cut plane up is our shadows probably grew a little bit here so we can actually take that and kind of track it through um, this but uh, so if we wanted to update this we would go and let's just uh, I'm going to zoom out just a little bit to capture everything here um, we are going to update our level one so we're going to redefine 3d document based on the current 3d window we'll redefine anyway so it's just a little warning there so we are now updating our 3d document view so whenever you bring in a new sketchup object into this rig what you want to do is you just want to click on all those 3d document viewpoints so that it will automatically regenerate it um, and essentially be capturing the content of your SketchUp object that you've recently brought in. So if it's a blank file, obviously the 3D documents don't have any information on there. Uh, so you want to just regenerate all of the, the 3D documents as like one of the first steps of cutting these floor plans. Uh, we do have a note on here, just use this to capture the sections. I'm going to delete that so that that note doesn't go through. So once we've created the 3D document, um, you can see that we actually already have a worksheet included here. So this is a worksheet that's been placed on the 3D document. And the reason we have that is these 3D documents get really heavy and slow to work with. So instead of um, working and trying to dimension in a 3D document, which you can't actually do, uh, you cannot dimension to a SketchUp object in a 3D document view for whatever reason, probably the same reason we can't do it in a floor plan view. So in order to get this to a format that we can work with and dimension um, and even clean up if we wanted, we add that worksheet view so that our worksheet then um, captures the content from the 3D document and it makes it much lighter and easier to work with here. So what I'm actually going to do at this point is we're going to, uh, we're going to rebuild our worksheet from the source view for that level one. So this may take just a few seconds here. Um, one of the things that I'm looking for is to see if the shadows grow because we lifted that section, meaning our walls got taller, meaning the sun should cast a little bit longer shadow on here. So um, we'll see that come through here. 
hopefully in just a, a second. Uh, it does take a little bit of time to capture the contents of the 3D document and convert that over. Um, so it kind of jumped my viewpoint there, a little bit tougher to see. Um, my eye, I kind of lost it there to see if the shadows grew or not. But, um, but with that there, we now have this picked up. Um, one of the things I like doing is just like deleting the outline whenever I bring this in just so that I um, know that it's been refreshed. Every time you refresh or rebuild, that outline will come back. Um, and so from here, once we've done this, then of course we, now we have this working view. Um, you can actually see that we do have some linked uh, section and elevation markers that have been placed on here as well. So um, this is one of those things that if you want to get sections and elevations to show up on ultimately our layout here, then we actually need to add those link markers back in. Um, so yeah, let's go check out the layout. You can see that it's updating from this view. Um, and yeah, so this has now been rebuilt from that new section plane that we, that we lifted there. So um, it's almost getting a little bit too shadowy in there. Um, we could always go in and lighten those up or delete those fills out if we wanted to. Um, but yeah, that's the process for cutting a floor plan. So um, let's jump back and try to get on track here with kind of our outline. So yeah, we talked about creating the 3D AXO view with the cut planes. We created a 3D document. We captured that to a worksheet. We didn't really talk about cleaning things up, but um, you can go in here and just kind of grab these fills and often just like, you know, pick up all the different fills or lines with a uh, specific, you know, setting here. Uh, one of the areas that I like doing this is actually on the elevations. Um, so we'll talk about that here in a second. But um, but yeah, that's the process you can go through. You can annotate all that, dimension it, um, and yeah, repeat for every single floor plan that you want. Uh, this template has a few different cuts for level one, um, an RCP, a roof, and then foundations. Um, we can look at those really quickly here. I don't want to go too long on this video. If you want the full in-depth training of how we uh, set these up, then uh, again, just go sign up for the membership and uh, you can watch this and download the sample file, play around with this for yourself in preparation for boot camp and the template dropping on Monday. So um, yeah, elevations. So just like, um, well actually the elevations workflow is a little bit different than the floor plans. We don't need to cut with a 3D document to create elevations. We can simply just set our elevations and um, the elevations themselves will generate obviously the view from the side of the um, the SketchUp object. So we're gonna wait here for a second as this generates, you know, projects that SketchUp object. Um, so yeah, this is, you know, straightforward, easy to get to in terms of this point. Uh, we're gonna turn off our clip planes for the moment. Um, but one of the things you'll notice here is, um, and I think this might just be a global setting on import. I'm not sure why or I haven't found exactly where the setting is that determines that the SketchUp object will get this kind of hatched pattern here. It's actually a pattern that is uh, assigned to like the, the pen number one. So it's like a thick uh, cut pen in this case. And so when you have your true line weight on, it does, you know, it definitely gives it some definition. But if you zoom in, you know, we're only at quarter inch scale here. Um, you can see that it definitely like you know makes things very dark. So one of the benefits of actually adding the worksheet to a sec or an elevation just like this in this case is that if we follow this through, we can go to our worksheet view here. You can see that we can go in and we can get rid of all those thick hatching lines that were added to um, the view. And the way that we can do that is, you know, if we rebuild this view from the source view, we have some dimensions turned on currently. So it's going to ask if we want to keep those dimensions and just turn them to static, which is okay in this case, because we know the, the model didn't change at all. Um, so yeah, it's asking about the associative dimensions. We'll just uh, change these to static. Um, so that way at least they remain. Um, but you'll see here when we rebuild this view, what we're going to get is all those hatched lines that we got from the projection of our SketchUp model. So this elevations always take just a little bit of time. But because we can go in and find the settings of these here, um, so let's pick up the settings. We're going to add 
here uh, I just like the line type we'll just sometimes I just like clicking a few of them to try to dial into the settings really those are the same um, we're gonna hit plus to see how many we have we have almost 42,000 lines here of this projection it looks like there's just a ton of them on that tree for whatever reason um, we can take all these and delete them so by doing this quick step we can reduce the amount of line work on those elevations dramatically and uh, we still kept all the shadows um, and I mean we could keep going with this and delete out um, you know more fills and more lines there's there's always going to be a lot of like white fills that get generated when you uh, or airspace fills um, kind of depending on depending on the settings of your 3d document but um, but yeah that's how we can quickly clean these up so that these um, perform better and are just you know easier to read in general and of course those get placed on their own uh, layouts here so this is gonna update real quickly there we go and yeah so that's how we create the elevations um, sections can be pretty straightforward. You don't necessarily need to go through all the steps. If you want to remove the hatching like we did from the elevations, then you would create a, um, um, you know, another worksheet and then you go in and delete those. But sometimes, like, I don't really mind that much having all the hatching. Um, it just really just depends on the purpose of what you're trying to do with this. Um, there's a few other things I want to share. Uh, the, some of the 3D views that we have set up. So, uh, not the 3D document views, but just like um, some of the 3D views that are set up to go and populate our cover sheet images. So in this case, this is a kind of nice high resolution uh, 4K image. Um, we can create those 4K images. You know, if we open, um, let's just open the 3D view. Um, we can actually go into these view settings here and you can see that um, even though we're showing this in our smaller display here on the window, uh, you can see this is actually a 4K image. You can change those by going in and setting the window size um, from right here. So you always check that first and then set the size um, is typically how I'll do it. Um, save the view and then that becomes a, a 4K image. You can always go much higher if you want. Uh, we also have some AXO views here. Um, you know, just looking at things from each different angle. So those show up here, not on our site plan, but on our 3D AXO views. So come on. So yeah, some nice kind of just 3D projections there. Uh, we can also do the exploded views. Um, you can see here there's um, there's actually three different, uh, essentially they're, they're, they're 3D documents views that um, have been cropped again from the top and bottom so that we're showing kind of the, uh, um, the roof, the floor plan section, and then kind of the, floor, the foundations and downward in these. This might take just a, a second here to regenerate. Um, so we'll let these run. There they go. That wasn't too bad. Um, so yeah, like I, like I mentioned, you know, roof, floor plan, and foundations here. So this is kind of like a nice view to uh, really see what's going on on these different sections of the project. Um, and so those are the exploded views. Uh, one thing that we didn't talk about that I wanted to share was the RCP view and how to set up this particular view. So from a 3D document here, we do have a view that's set as a, um, this is essentially a 3D document, you know, look where the source view is looking upwards. So let's open the source view here. Um, you can actually see that we are looking at the project from the bottom. So this is like one of the few times where um, we'll actually save a view looking at it from the bottom here looking up. And so what's cool about this is we can create that 3D document from this view, but it's not necessarily in the same uh, orientation as our floor plan views. Um, so ultimately what we do with this is once again, we have a worksheet that clips all the line work and fills from here. And on the worksheet view, we can go to the RCP. And what we've done is we've actually just taken 
everything that comes through here and you just mirror it directly from uh, the bottom. So let's actually delete this real quick. I'll show you, show you how we do this. Um, we are going to rebuild from the source view. And so when it rebuilds here, you'll see that, okay, our uh, insertion point, our zero point, which we've set right up here at the corner of our walls, um, it's obviously not in the same orientation as our floor plan. So what we need to do in this case is just simply mirror it directly on this line. And by doing so, that flips it around. And once again, I'm just gonna delete that boundary. And so now this is in the right orientation. And if we even go and we show as a trace reference our floor plan here, um, you can see, like if we go in, let's just look at this section here. So you can see those walls are exactly on and all of that comes through just perfect, just by mirroring it exactly on that line. So, um, so yeah. Okay, I'm running on long here. I'm gonna wrap this one up. I could talk about this stuff all day. We definitely go into more detail on this in the training video on the uh, the member site. And uh, so yeah, go check that out. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it. We'll talk on publishers super fast. So three publishers, one for uh, the BIMX, one for DWG views of floor plans, elevations, and sections. And then of course, a PDF set that um, you can just go hit publish on and it's just going to run through and publish all of these automatically and yeah that's that's pretty much the setup here for this um archicad template that we've rigged up that's specifically built for um that sketchup import the 3d document setups the worksheets all that stuff has already been placed um, a lot of the notes are in there that you can just drag and drop and add to your project. And um, yeah, hopefully uh, you've learned a few little tips and tricks here today on uh, importing SketchUp into ARCHICAD and how to generate these viewpoints. Again, uh, I invite all of you to come join us in the ContraBIM uh, bootcamp on our 2022 versioned template that we are releasing and kicking off next Monday. Um, so go check that out. And uh, yeah, we'll hope to see you there in that advanced training. Uh, really, it's training for beginners all the way to advanced. We're going to cover so much content in there. It's going to be a lot of fun. And um, yeah, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you here on another ContraBIM video soon.